We are facing serious challenges, obviously, uh, and they have been uh, exacerbated uh, largely by COVID-19. Um, we don't see ourselves emerging very soon to even the standards uh, of 2019 uh, in the next few months. It will probably take another 18 months to two years until you know we are at the old normal. But we are setting our business uh, for the new normal. One of the biggest challenges uh, to start answering your questions that we as a business have been facing is really the risk model of uh, that South African banks and financial institutions use to make decisions around supporting local manufacturers. We have had uh, incredible opportunities uh, brought to us, which we couldn't find, not because our balance sheets are weak and, uh, or anything like that, but simply because uh, there is uh, zero appetite from local banks and financial institutions to take risks around uh, or, or placing some confidence and faith on the capability and capacity of local manufacturers. Uh, the other one is uh, really around uh, policy formulation and instruments that government and John will, will help on this one. Um, you know, there are lots of grants, lots of uh, loan schemes that government has uh, initiated and implemented. Um, but because, you know, I come from government, I was, I was the previous commissioner of SARS. So I understand, you know, the bureaucratic nonsense that, uh, that really uh, we have to go through to get certain things passed. They have to tick so many boxes, it's impossible to actually make a, 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 an industry-friendly policy. I mean, uh, if, I, if I could make one example, uh, that's the Black Industrialist uh, uh, Scheme from the DTI, a very good scheme that uh, supports businesses to acquire capital equipment. Uh, but the inflexibility of it is that, uh, you know, with capital equipment alone, you know, you don't have a business. You need input, uh, you need support from the input material, the build of material that you have, you need in order to produce whatever you are producing. And and you cannot just go and, uh, you know, have uh, fancy machines in your plant and not have uh, money to buy, uh, you know, components and uh, input material to manufacture this thing. So the policy is right, but the flexibility within the policy needs to be with that. Uh, the same with the national incentive plans. Um, the fact that, you know, once you have uh, given this company uh, credits, uh, you know, the loan is becomes payable. So the more successful you are in creating those credits, the more disadvantage it is to your company. And because uh, you might not be in a cash flow position to be able to pay that or repay that particular loan um, at that time, at that point in time when it's, when it's been called on to be paid. And then also, I mean, the issue, my my big back part, uh, as I said, I used to be the commissioner of SAS, so we ran customs also. And the challenges that we have in terms of uh, enforcement of existing duty regimes. You know, we have lots of illicit goods that are coming through our country and smuggled. There's no enforcing of uh, standards. Um, uh, custom is uh, extremely bureaucratic. There are lots of delays in the, in the logistic chain. Um, the cost of doing business in South Africa, once your container comes from Devon, you know, to bring it up here, it's a lot of money. You know? um, and the taxes that have been levied uh, for local manufacturing are a disincentive. 
uh, if I have to put it that way, you know, for, for, for local manufacturing. I cannot think of one um, instrument or uh, text called customs instrument that really is working perfectly at this, point, uh, at this point in time. So there's a lot of things that we need to do in order to, you know, stimulate this economy. And one of those things is really around uh, uh, local manufacturing. Because if we don't localize our economy uh, by supporting local manufacturing, we are exporting all our wealth uh, to other countries. And we need jobs here. And it's only manufacturing really uh, that can create those, uh, those jobs. I, I belong to a, a unit within the DGIC uh, that is essentially responsible for promoting um, South African export into the rest of Africa. Uh, to assist South African companies to, who are looking to invest in African countries, uh, be it for, to, to manufacture or be it to establish uh, distribution centers for their goods and services around the continent. And, and let me start with the following. I, I heard you, Eric, talking about uh, where uh, the contribution of South African manufacturing back in 1980 to, to date. And, and one can clearly see a, a, a contraction uh, there, a significant one. But also, I, I, I want to be uh, forward-looking. I want to, to look at the future, and I want to uh, begin uh, to, for us to talk about what is it that we must do to regain lost ground, what is it that we must do to ensure that we can secure markets for our manufacturers, uh, across Africa and around the world. Uh, I think that's an important conversation uh, to, work, uh, to work from. Uh, the first point I want to make is that the ground is shifting. Uh, things are changing dra dramatically, politically and economically. If you look at the power dynamics, be it from a political economic perspective 10, 20 years ago, uh, and you look at the ranking of different countries, uh, the world was totally different. I mean, today, China is, is considered to be one of the most uh, advanced economies, uh, threatening even uh, the whole, uh, one of the countries that was considered to be a superpower. So that's the first point that I made. And it's also changing for South Africa, because uh, whereas in the past, and, 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 and the results, uh, 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 the National Treasury argues that uh, our economy is contracting by about minus 6% and uh, exports is going to be a critical driver for economic recovery and Africa is a key market. Now what has also happened in terms of changing environment is that whereas from 1994 to 2015 we increased our exports into the continent quite significantly from 9 billion rents to over 320 billion rents uh, and that boosted our manufacturing uh, capabilities but from 2015 to date it's like we have plateaued we we, we have uh, the increases have been very very marginal now we have been talking to many south african manufacturers to understand what are the reasons but one of the key issues is also we have seen other new players entering the market. And as they've entered, they've continued to push South Africa out of that. As a result, many of our companies that ventured into the continent that acted as a pool for our manufacturers are returning. So ShopRite, we have had some announcement, Bedvest and many others. So those are important things for us to look at. And, 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 and so I want to appeal to our manufacturers that we need to take that into consideration. The second point is that there is an untapped potential across the, the continent for manufacturing. So if you look at data, be it from World Bank, Brooking Institutes and all of that, the potential to increase revenue growth from manufacturing of activity by 2025 is estimated at about 930 billion dollars consumption across africa is estimated to reach a top of about 2.1 trillion us dollars across a range of industries so there are significant opportunities out there what is also happening because of that is that the aspirations of many African countries to also increase their manufacturing capability is growing. And as a result, 
many of them are opting to adopt import substitution policies across the board. And what it's doing, they are burning the imports of a range of products from South Africa and other countries into their countries. But I think South Africa is being largely negatively affected in that sense. So it's important to, 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 to balance that with whether as manufacturers you continue to pursue a policy of just selling or whether you, you have to review an approach where you can do assembly or you can do some value-added manufacturing elsewhere as well. So those are some of the issues that we, we, we have uh, to, to tackle uh, going forward. I, I, I want to just uh, 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 stop here uh, for now and conclude by saying the following. Our manufacturing needs the African continent to grow. There is no doubt about it. There is no doubt about it across the board. We need to position ourselves to take advantage of the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement. When it comes into implementation, that's the opportunity we need to capitalize on. But the truth is, many countries from around the world are also looking to leverage that. Now, what it means is, as South Africa, we need to adopt a new approach. We talk a lot about the SA Inc. approach. How can we as government, DTIC and other government departments, including defense, work together with manufacturers across the board to identify African target markets and countries that we need to specifically target together in order to ensure that we can produce goods that they are consuming, that they cannot manufacture, that we are manufacturing, and also create opportunities for us to, over time, start sourcing some goods from those countries into South Africa, be it even as inputs. And I'll talk, for example, uh, before I close, uh, if you look at tire manufacturing rubber, natural rubber, where West Africa is quite dominant, there are opportunities. If I look at the market for white goods, uh, uh, that some of which we are talking here, the projections for that are, are, are quite significant as well. Uh, business to business spend uh, for goods and services as well is also growing. And I think as South Africa, we need to work more closely together, private sector and government, to identify these opportunities and then adopt a, an approach that we can negotiate bilateral agreements with these countries that will allow us to increase trade between South Africa and the other African countries as well. Thank you.